Well, I would also just, just, just a thought. I mean, a lot of people that, you know, come in for a logo, this may be their first time getting a logo. And I mean, if you're the designer, then you do this all the time. So it's kind of, <laughs> it's kind of in your hands to manage the person. Of the Icy Pixels podcast. This is David. And this is Anthony. Thanks for joining us again. Uh, we did that thing that we said we weren't going to do again because our voices sound too similar. But um, anyway, what? it's springtime. Uh, what have you been doing to uh, celebrate springtime in Atlanta? Um, well, today I was quote unquote sick, so I stayed at home. Um, and <laughs> cleaned up and uh, planted some plants and some gardening and stuff like that, you know. Um, How's life yeah, in your yeah, retirement know. community? Huh? How are things what? in your retirement <laughs> community? You sound like <laughs> I'm tired, dude. Huh? Like, you know, so that I didn't sound exciting. Uh, planted some roses with apple. What was I supposed to do? I don't, I don't know. know. I went to the gym. But that's not news worthy. So I saw you uh, posting some thirst traps on Instagram on top of Stone Mountain. Oh. Hey, when the gains are apparent, I can't, you know. <laughs> Far be it from me to hide. All right. Hide. So, yeah, you want to check out uh, whatever he's talking about. Uh, find him on Instagram. Oh. Uh, <laughs> so we had one day of spring uh, last Saturday. It was probably like probably went up to like eighty, and the next day it was like the high was like fifty, and tonight it's supposed to be down to like thirty two. Tomorrow the high is like forty something. So that's nice. We had our day of spring, and now we're back to having winter. So uh, my kids yeah. went and pulled out all their shorts and stuff and got all hype, and then they were like, "Today I came home and they had on snow boots." I don't know what's wrong with them, but yeah, yeah, it was it went down in the thirties earlier this week, mm-hmm. like for two nights. Right after I spent the weekend getting like some of my plants outside and everything, and then it dropped. And but they 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 lived. That's good to know. The plant the plants and the hundred tadpoles that my son has in a Tupperware container on the porch. What? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. He brought some frog eggs back from Alabama and they hatched. So huh. there's about a hundred of them in a container. Interesting. You gonna let yeah. them free or something? Yeah, there's like a stream in my neighborhood. So you're just gonna, gonna let go some... the, the local habitat with some Alabama frogs? Yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> But um, yeah. He, I mean, he wants to keep like one or two or something like that. But yeah, we're gonna. Yeah, it's like, like I thought some of them were dead or something like that. It's like, nope. They all survived the freezing. <laughs> they are very much all very much alive. You were trying to thin the herd. <laughs> yeah, but no, yeah. I, I mean, I just didn't think it's like, well, a bunch of eggs. Like, why would they all hatch? But I guess normally, um, something else comes and eats them. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. you need to get them out there where it's, they have to compete. Yeah, some survival of the fitness, fittest. Yeah, because they're being coddled right now. So, I don't know. We'll see what happens. Well, good luck with that. <laughs> um, so I guess that's our weather report for this week. Um, there was something else I was going to talk about. I forgot what it was. Since I forgot. We're going to go ahead and get into our topic of this week. So, um, so I'll tell my backstory a second after. But the topic for this week is um, showing work that's not 100% done to clients. So, uh, 
story behind it. Story time with David. We need some music for that. Um, oh, I put that in after a fact. Okay. But um, so I designed something for someone. It was so, so a client contacted me. They wanted a logo design, or they wanted a logo tweaked. They had a logo someone else did for them. They wanted some changes done to it. I don't like doing that type of work in general, but yeah, you know, I'm, I'm a nice guy, so I did it. Um, so they wanted some different. They wanted to see different variations of a logo they already had. So I made the variations. I did not spend a whole lot of time getting them exact, like in terms of make, matching up their font and getting everything looking perfect because they asked for like six or seven different variations of this thing. Like I want to see it this way and I want to see it with these colors and I want to see it this way and this way and this way. So I didn't spend a lot of time on any of them because I wanted to just get it in front of them so they could decide whether they even wanted to pursue that any further. Um, in the end, they came back to me after some other things went on, client, the project finished up. But anyway, at the end, they came back and they said basically that they were kind of disappointed in the work they saw because those logos I gave them weren't didn't look as good as they expected them to look. And it looked like I had rushed things, et cetera, et cetera. And so I spent some time trying to explain to them, like, and of course, then, of course, they also tried to get me to discount the price. That's a, a, we've talked about that in previous episodes. Um, I did not discount the price, but um, I spent some time trying to explain to them the reasoning and the rationale behind why I did not deliver to them a hundred percent fleshed out uh, mock-ups for each variation that they asked for. So um, I wanted to talk about kind of that whole situation. Kind of does it make sense to? spend you know hours fleshing out a mock-up that the customer might not even really like or should I just do enough to get by or what's the appropriate way of handling that and then um, well there's a whole lot of carry-ons from that because you know that's going to affect my cost because let's say hypothetically I was charging you $80 to do a logo for you or to do you know whatever work it is if I'm just doing some quick revisions for you just so you can get an idea and then I'm going to flesh out one, whichever one you pick, that price point might work for someone. But if I'm actually fleshing out each one, then that price has to multiply because I'm spending way more time on each one. Yeah. Well, yeah, because that's, <laughs> that's three complete designs or nearly complete or very complete. Um. Yeah, because yeah, I know we've talked about before, like when you make logo samples for someone, you, I often always, like I'll say, yeah, I'll give you three different options or four different options or whatever. At least one of those is going to just be fluff as a placeholder that I do not want them to choose, but it's like, well, I have to give them another option, so I'll make something. Hmm. And so, or a lot, well, that's not always true. Let me not say that. That's not always true. Sometimes there are four good or three, whatever number, good legitimate logos. Sometimes there is one or maybe two, possibly, that are fluff, and I know they're not amazing, and I don't spend a lot of time on them, and I don't fully flesh them out because I know I don't want the person to choose them. I kind of want them. I'm guiding them to the, the yeah. right path. Well, and you know the problem with that is they're always going to pick the worst one. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Unless you do like a design analysis for all the ones that you like, and then just it's like, oh yeah, and then they're this one. <laughs> <laughs> There's some other ones. <laughs> Give them to them like on a wrinkle sheet of paper or something. Yeah, it's like oh, I drew this on a napkin, just you know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so I mean, how did it turn out? I mean, like what? <laughs> what does you know? What did they respond to you resisting the fleshing them all out? They didn't really respond. I just was like, look, I'm, I can't budge on price, and here's why I did what I did. And they just didn't respond to that. So hmm. I didn't worry about it. But it's it made me think about it. Like, what would have been... Is there a better way I should have handled that? Or is this something that you kind of do on a customer-by-customer basis? I mean, I try to let um, people know up front like a, like a what it is. Thing. Like, I mean... If it's logos, you know, come up with three kind of variations for logos. That's generally what I tell people I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. I'll give you three variations and 
then we can pick one that we kind of like and then narrow down from there. Um, I mean, coming up with three variations generally isn't that difficult for me if I know kind of know what they want. Um, but do you fully work them out? Like, um, do you give them variations of full color? No. Do you give them variations of different colors? No. Do you? Okay. Yeah. So that's that's basically what I did. Is I gave them variations, but I threw some colors on them because some of them were just I need to see this in a different color. I need to see this with the color switched. So they were in color, but I just didn't like. I'm not gonna put your tagline and your business name under this little logo when I. Yeah. Well, in in the situation, it didn't make sense to do that to me. Yeah. No, I understand. This kind of like ties into something I was doing recently at work. Um, they basically, I mean, I had been working on a project to design a logo, and they basically didn't want me to spend as much time on that because we had other stuff going on. So even though I had some designs and stuff like that they just didn't want me to spend the time on it they rather they prefer that it was kind of outsourced so we just use this website called leak um logo tournament where you know you basically set up a prize and then like people compete sending you logos you you know you do a whole design brief what you want and all this kind of stuff and like every time somebody submits something you can ask them to change something tweak this blah 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 so i was that guy mm -hmm. i got to be that guy <laughs> Oh, that's um, that you know, it, it was interesting because I mean, it's kind of not related, but you know, on one hand, it's like oh, okay, well, I would rather design this myself, but on the other hand, it's like mm -hmm. it's kind of nice to be, you know, directing other people to design things for me, <laughs> and I can do something here, uh, you know. And what we ended up choosing, it's like okay, now I'm going to take that and I'm probably going to modify it some or do something with it, but you know it's I don't know it's kind of interesting how so but that's that's a different topic but um it was kind of like that where it's like I was just telling them it was like uh, can you change the font on this uh can you do this mm -hmm. <laughs> and they were doing it and sending me you know I got like 307 logos in total some some oh, were wow. just variations of the same thing but yeah <laughs> mm -hmm. um that's interesting. That sounds like a topic for another time. That whole well, we kind of did talk about idea. that once. <laughs> yeah, but I don't. I mean, did you get anything good out of it, or was um, it mainly? I mean, because of course you could direct them, but was I mean like initially was it just a lot of like the logo, the automated? Design there was stuff? a lot of stuff that sucked. Oh. Okay. Um, so I mean, but out of that, there were some that was like, oh, okay, actually, you actually put thought in that, and actually, the levels mm -hmm. on the site it says the more you pay your prizes or whatever, the better quality of designer you get. But uh, yeah, but um, yeah, no, no, it's um, because I, I mean, it was interesting because yeah, I got a lot of variations, but yeah, I didn't expect them to completely flesh everything out. Like, okay, no, put it on a business card and let me see it on a t-shirt, and you know. Okay, now let me see this one on a t-shirt in green. I mean, you know, it's like, come on. <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I definitely don't like doing that level for... Once you, like, so let's say I design four, vari three variations, whatever, and you pick one. Once you've picked one and you say, I want to go with this one, then I don't mind doing a little more fleshing out and maybe showing you on a business card, letterhead, all that type of stuff. But we've got to be pretty confident this is where you're going because I've also had a situation where someone picked one and then I went pretty far down that road of fleshing out and then they were like eh, let's go back to number two and it's like no, what? no. no. <laughs> you can't just suddenly change your mind like that hey. so that's so my justification uh, since I never really explained it that much is like I don't want to spend a bunch of time fleshing out a logo a variation of something until you kind of know you want to go that way um because that it's just time and it's going to cost you more to do that so if you're just kind of because a lot of people approach at least i've been approached a lot by people that are just kind of want to they have several ideas or they don't have an idea whatever it is they they want to see some things and so you show them show them some things and that kind of guides their thought into which way they want to go but in that show me some things, I just want to see some variations. I want to see this and this color and this and this, and like all these different things. I'm not going to go down far down that path for you. Yeah. Unless yeah, you I mean, pay it's... me for it. I'm not going to go far down that path because it doesn't make sense. You, you're not even confident that you're wanting to go that way. If you say, 
I definitely want to go this way, then I'll go that I mean, way. Some of that me. has to be, you know, use your imagination to figure it out. Like, you yeah, can't just yeah. change the color in your mind. I mean, I know that's harder. I mean... That's difficult. Yeah. That's very difficult, Joe. Which, I mean, I guess I understand. I don't understand. <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, if you don't have imagination, you have to pay someone to have Yeah, but I mean, come on, like a little slight variation, you can't just I don't know. Yeah. Like, come on. <laughs> that that I mean, yeah. I'm not asking you I to told, design because yeah. I mean, I yeah, I'll design the whole thing in my head. I do that all the time and then before I get to the paper, but I under, I don't expect people to do that, but you know, like, okay, what what do I think this will look at it going here? Hmm. I don't I don't think that's asking a lot. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. It, it, I think it's it's, a, it's up to the person. I mean, it depends on the person, and that's kind of what I my takeaway from the situation was like. I need to evaluate the person I'm dealing with and kind of determine, based on what I know about them, my discussion with them, or whatever our exchanges. Do they have an imagination? Can they picture things in different colors? <laughs> um, and are they? Can they? Yeah. Do they? Can they picture things? Can they envision how things are going to work? And then also, have I managed their expectations properly? Because I think in the in the situation we talked about the, the story during story time, basically I didn't fully manage the expectation. I didn't explain to them because the request came to me like, "Hey, can you just tweak this? I just want to see variations of this." And so I was like, "Okay, this seems pretty informal. I don't have to charge them much." Because it, it doesn't seem like they want me to develop a brand new logo. They just want to see that logo done differently. So I'm like, okay, yeah, I can do that. So I didn't manage the expectations in terms of, okay, you're going to ask for variations. I'm going to give you variations and not going to be fully f- fleshed out. If you like one, I'll flesh it out and I'll charge you for that. I didn't explain all that. No. So because of that, I think that was the issue. But it, initially the request was, hey, can you just, hey, I have something. Can you just tweak it? And that seems like, that seems pretty informal to me. And then, I don't know. I made a lot of assumptions, and that's a lot of that's on me. But I do feel, from the client perspective, you have to understand the cost involved and all that stuff. So. Yeah, I mean, you would, yeah, yeah. You're not there to just operate, you know, colors for them for yeah. Because I mean, what cause you got to let people yeah, know what I, they're I, paying. So I don't for. mind. I mean, it's, they're not paying. You're not so much getting paid hourly as you're getting mm-hmm. paid like for what you know how to do. Hey, hold on a second. Tell people to stop calling you during the podcast. Hold on. Just pause it. All right, so I guess Anthony's finished with his phone call, so we can continue. Um, I forgot what we were talking about completely. Uh, in terms of what specifically we're saying. But I think for this topic, I would say the main, it, I think it's important from a, like a designer's perspective to make sure you manage people's expectations. Because I think, kind of like what I said, I, I think I did not fully manage the customer's expectations. So they thought they were going to get something that they definitely were not going to get for the money they were paying. And then I think, and I think if you communicate to that, pe- that to people and say, hey, I'm not going to fully flesh these out then they'll be I believe they'll be they should be more understanding and you can also let them know like if you want each one of these fully fleshed out each one of these concepts fully fleshed out then you're gonna have to pay more yeah and that, that's only reasonable because you want three fully designed logos as opposed to some ideas and one fully designed logo yeah I mean and I think on the designers end you gotta I mean seems annoying or whatever but you may have to be really specific <laughs> yeah Despite, I would say yeah. depending on who it is but it's good to be consistent across the board but I mean because you don't know especially as you get more business you don't know how people are going to be so it's better to just yeah that's that's one thing I like about working with clients I've worked with before because I have some clients I, I have a couple cl- a client with I was working with last week and I know she's picky I know she likes to see lots of variations of things but I also know her style, so I know what's going to work. So when I when she first contacts me, I know kind of what area, which way I need to go to to get something she's going to like pretty easily. Yeah. Um, 
once I put something together, yeah, she might want to see a couple color variations and she, she might come back with a bunch of changes. But I know she kind of she knows what to expect from me. I know what to expect from her. So it's easier to deal with. It's just, it's just like, like, you know, if you're dating someone, you know, the first date or whatever, you've you got to feel them out. Not like that, feel them out. But like you got to kind of figure out what they like and what they don't like and all that type of stuff. But once you know a person, you know what's going to work and what's not going to work. Yeah. Yes, yeah, but you know, well, I mean, it'd be nice to always get returning customers, I guess. But <laughs> yeah, yeah you got to do it sometimes. But it's it's not. Uh, I think sometimes I think for me at least, sometimes I get comfortable and I'm used to the process that I do with existing customers, where it's just like, okay, you want this, all right, I'll do it, and it's not a lot of back and forth and trying to be on your best behavior and all this other stuff, and so. Sometimes I forget everything I need to do. Yeah, well, I mean, maybe you have just like a template. <laughs> yeah, like a checklist. Like, explain to them how logo design works. Yeah. Well, I mean, you could, like you can have a template proposal that you just send to people, and they ask, like, "Hey, you want a logo?" It's like, okay, here you go. <laughs> yeah. So that's one thing that I think is very important: is process and procedure. Which is something I don't always, well, I very rarely do, honestly. Um, in terms of like asking them the right questions, getting all like all type of documents, all the documentation and all that type of stuff out of the way, contracts, so that you can make sure you're getting paid and kind of protect yourself. And that's the, some of the stuff I don't always do. And I can say confidence has bitten me, come back to bite me because I haven't done it all the time. Some in some cases, you know, it's been a it hasn't mattered, I guess, but in some cases it's definitely come back to bite me because I didn't explain things as well and people had mixed messages and were confused and didn't understand and all that type mm. of stuff. Yeah. So <laughs> make a template. <laughs> yeah, so I'd say like so takeaways, make sure you communicate all your stipulations and design process up front. Like I think it's helpful to have like a page on your website or somewhere that explains your logo design process. Like here's what I'm gonna do, yeah. um, and here's how the process works from your perspective as a customer, and here's what I need from you. And also make sure you're asking all the right questions up front, and then uh, give the person time to give them a chance to read over it, understand it, and ask questions that are not clear because. The more clear they are with that, then it can be more effective. Because it's like one thing I talked to the, the client we talked about in my story time, it's like you, there was a lack of not good enough communication on either side, but it was kind of on their part. It's where it mattered because they weren't communicating exactly what they wanted. Yeah. And if you don't tell me exactly what you want, or if I send you logos and you don't say, hey, I was expecting something more, then. I'm gonna assume everything's well, cool. I would also just 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 a thought. I mean, a lot of people that you know come in for a logo, this may be their first time getting a logo. And yeah. I mean, if you're the designer, then you do this all the time. So it's kind of <laughs> it's kind of in your hands to manage the person. Yeah, yeah. Because you More are the correct. professional. So yeah, so that's. I would say ninety percent of the time if the if the interaction with your customer between your customer and yourself goes poorly, it's probably your fault. <laughs> yeah. And not like you were out here wilding on the phone or not paying bill not paying or whatever, but if you don't set that expectation and say, Look, if you don't communicate well with me and don't tell me what you want, I can't give it to you. This is what I'm going to give you for the money you're off. You're, you're, you know, for, for what you're requesting. This is what it's going to cost, and this is what you're going to get. This is the time frame. This is what I need from you in terms of communication. This is what I need from you in terms of information. This is what I need from you in terms of deposit. All that. If you lay all that out, and they break the rules, then they should know what to get, and it should be like, there should be no misunderstanding. Now, if they act stupid, yeah, that's their fault. But if they understand upfront, like if you act stupid. I may fire you as a client and just I will keep your deposit yeah, or whatever and then that like you gotta have the, all that stuff if all that's laid out up front yeah I mean it's potential that they may there's less likely to be they may any not, confusion 
because they know what they're terrible doing. clients may never be clients because of what you set up let them know up front yeah so it's your fault <laughs> yeah you should know what to expect yeah well yeah <laughs> Of course, relationships are a lot more. Those kind of relationships are a lot more complicated. Yeah, but, yeah it can be more complicated than that, but it yeah. doesn't have to be. All right, so <laughs> <laughs> in other news, uh, I don't like designing funeral programs and funeral stuff for people, but I've done it quite a bit. Uh, yeah, it's just sad. Yeah. I wonder if there's people that specifically... Well, I mean, I'm sure there are. Yeah, they work for, like, funeral homes. So I, I know when I was younger, uh, I mentioned to somebody, like... You know, because every funeral home, they have funerals consistently, and they're going to have people that need stuff done. And I was like, oh, that's a steady stream of yeah. business there. But I don't know if I would want to I mean, do that business. Nobody cares about what you designed. <laughs> for that kind of work it's like just put in a template for every person yeah put the they out picture of their face and yeah. in memory just put your, and the dates put their face and on all the that t-shirt it's pretty easy yeah it's not really I don't know maybe some people will want something more specific but you know generally I think it's you know I just want Mildred on the on the, on the flyer a nice picture of her you could probably pump out the same template. <laughs> yeah, but it, it's one of those things where I just wouldn't. I don't know. It would be depressing. Like, oh, Jamal well, got I mean, shot again. and also you've designed several for family, probably. So, <laughs> but yeah, I've done them from family, and but just in general, like, so I did one last week for a kid. It's like he's so, younger than me. Not that I'm that young, but he's like pretty young, and. Yeah, and I've done. I think I've done one for a kid, like yeah, my kid's that's... age. Yeah, so I wouldn't want to do it, but I. Yeah. I mean, just make sure you manage expectations. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, make sure you you deposit. Um, <laughs> yeah, all that applies. Well, yeah, I, 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 so I think about hmm? that's a good point. That, I know you were joking, but it's a good point. That's definitely you kind of feel guilty. You kind of feel sad for the people. Like you know, I, I know you lost somebody, but listen, I'm not doing like, 57 revisions of this thing. Yeah, and I do need some money up front. <laughs> I can't just keep revising, 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 just because because you do feel sorry for people, but you gotta remember. Yeah, this and business. people expect to start. Yeah, I mean, it, I don't know. It, it, that's a weird. That's a weird thing, I man. It's just like there's a million other things that need to be designed in the world. That it's like I don't know that I want to. I mean, it's important to be passionate about what you, what the work you do. I think. I mean, sometimes you're going to do boring stuff, yeah. but you got to be passionate about it if you're going to really do your best work. <laughs> so. mm -hmm. Well, I, I say like for this and for just for any kind of design work, I think it's important that. Um, not only setting expectations and all that type of stuff, but you're able to provide a good product based on, you know, the information you have, whatever, what they need. And if you can't, for whatever reason, you let people know and you communicate clearly, like all those things are very important. And then I'm trying to remember there was something else that came up in my interaction with that person. I can't remember. I'll think of it as soon as I move on to another topic. But yeah, funeral programs aren't fun, but yeah, it is a consistent flow of business if you get in the right loop of people. If you, if that's your thing, I mean, just I, I would just people that are corners. So <laughs> I don't know. Somebody's got to do it. All right. Well. I can't think of what else I was going to say about that design yep. that I did. No, I can't remember. It was something something else that came up in the conversation I had with a client. 
about the whole process. I guess they were just. I think the main thing is that Jay, they they had different expectations for the process than I did, which is fine. But I should have if a uh, conversation to level said all that could have fixed it earlier, and it's still oh so that was what I was gonna say. Don't let people guilt you into charging less. <laughs> so the funeral talk made you think of that. No, no, no. The funeral people didn't try and do that. That's fine. I like. I understand. So with funerals, I have in some cases kind of guilted myself into charging people less because I'm like, yeah, yeah, they're sad, and I know how it feels to lose somebody or whatever. And so I don't want to stress them out with having to pay my fee for my design. But it's like, no, this I do this to support my family, and you know, this is how much it's worth. And so I can't just discount it just because I feel bad or whatever. And if I do discount it, I, I, I should at least let you know what it was going to be. Like, this is what I would normally charge and I'm giving you this discounted rate for whatever reason. So I was going to say, like, don't let people guilt you because I've had people run the guilt trip with funeral stuff on in different occasions. And I've had with this, the, with the situation we talked about during story time, I've had people, that person specifically, they didn't specifically say, I think you should charge me less, but this was kind of their justification for not wanting to pay that much. It was, hey, well, the designs weren't what I was expecting. And like, it's like, you don't do no. that at McDonald's. So, it, it goes well, they may goes do that at McDonald's, but... Um. <laughs> well, I guess you can complain about the food if it's got, like, hair in it, but hair in it is different than I don't like the flavor oh, of this yeah, particular Big like, Mac. Well, that's what they taste like. Like if I if I gave you the wrong file, that's that's like hair in it. Or if like it's it's you know the wrong format or something blatantly wrong. But if it's just like I don't like the way this looks, yeah, then that's it's different. Not really, yeah. I mean that was the direction they wanted to go. I'm guessing <laughs> they chose that at some point. They liked it at some point. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, you yeah. change your mind. Yeah, you gotta make that bad. clear. <laughs> So yeah, that I think it can be tough because I think some people are better at running the guilt trip than others. But I think it's important not to fall for it, and, and or at least just be cognizant of what's happening. Because I've definitely been about to, you know, say, okay, well, yeah, I can reduce the price of this. And I was like, wait a minute, I see what you're trying to do. I mean, I'm <laughs> you I'm just want to pay guilt money. tripping myself no, before sorry. I even say anything. <laughs> just me like talking myself out of money. Before I even talk to them, so. yeah. But they, you gotta say no. That's what I've learned is no, yeah. just no. Yes and no, but you know, in this situation, no, like uh, no to the. Well, like to somebody discount. said, um, like no, on the friend zone, want, friend, want, she said, she said, my rate is my rate for everybody. <laughs> That's what it is. That way you yeah, take all the stress of you trying to, you know, it's like, no, this is what I charge. <laughs> what do you want me to do? Well, that's that's a challenge that I could, I think I have not taken enough time to establish yeah. what my rate is. So it's kind of, I, like, I think we both do this. We kind of quote on a job, base, per job basis. So if I know what the job is and I kind of get an idea and sometimes my idea about the job is wrong, then I'll make up a yeah. number and we'll go from that instead of kind of figuring out how many hours it's going to take and calculating my hours and coming away to rate off of that. We're saying, hey, for a logo, this is the rate and you're going to get excellent work at this yeah. rate because it's more than enough. And that's what I think the challenge is because I don't know. I charge one person one thing and the other person I might charge something completely different. I hope they never talk, talk to each other. <laughs> they're like, whoa, that's, <laughs> that's vastly different. Or someone who paid less refers me to their friend and their friend's expecting to pay that low rate. But this month I got, you know, I want to buy some something for my car. And so I'm going to charge them more because I'm just feeling the yeah, need for some money. I think you, you so, yeah. normalize that rate. Yeah, I think... Just like, you know, a lot of this has uh, parallels with relationships and stuff like that, but it's, it's consistency. Like, if I'm consistent in what I say and what I do, with from a logo perspective and design, from my per- the perspective of my work, then yeah, I can say my rate is my rate. 
But I can say personally, I'm not always consistent in terms of because if you if the logo is not something like if I'm not as excited or passionate about doing the work, then it is a strong possibility that the work may not be as good as something that I'm excited yeah, about. Yeah, but I mean, it may not be groundbreaking, but but if the money if I charge enough can money, justify. I can make <laughs> anything. I can you know, yeah, yeah, exactly. I can I can develop It'll passion. spark something in you. If you know, you know, you're getting that check. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, I think it takes stress out of yeah. all of, off of everybody. Like they're not worried about wondering what the rate's going to be. They already know what your rate is. You know what your rate is, so you know what you're getting. They know what to expect, and like this, I don't know. When you give people an option, so you give people wiggle room. They're going to wiggle. So, I mean, not that you have to. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can. I mean, yeah, you can negotiate your price if you want to, you know, in special cases or whatever, but general knowledge for the average person needs to be my rate is my rate. Mm-hmm. So in terms of, like, showing people the work that's in progress and not 100% polished and everything, do you have, have you had any negative experience in terms of that? Like, with showing people something that wasn't... Um... Nobody's really said anything, but it kind of depends on the person if how well I know them mm. or where. It just depends on the person how much I'll show them. If it's a new client, then I'm le- a lot less likely to show you something. Do you after. like? Uh... I mean, I'm not going to just show you sketches. If I know you, then yeah, I'll sketch something on the paper and like here, this is what this is kind of what. Well, like for a t-shirt I designed recently, I did that. I was like, here, this is this is about what you're thinking. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. But that's because I knew them. If this isn't somebody that, uh, you know, a returning client is a new client, then, yeah, I'm going to have to give them, I'm going to be okay. a lot more formal with what I show them. Because <laughs> they don't, they don't, they don't know what I, they don't necessarily know what, you know, I mean, I guess they may know what I can yeah, do, uh, you know, the trust. I think is about it, like, you know, they'd say about yeah. that you don't want to see how the sausage is made. Because I've sketched stuff on napkins for people, and a few times people have been impressed. Well, a lot of times people are impressed because they, they see the thought process in, like I'll come up with a really good idea on the spot, but there's been a couple times I've done that for people, and then they just disappeared. I don't know if they just took the nap. Well, I never give them the nap, and I keep the nap. But I don't know whether they just took the idea and ran with it with someone else, or what happened. But yeah, I have a note. You really care, but uh, um, no, it was, just, it was like an informal <laughs> thing. From napkin. But anyway, <laughs> uh, I feel like showing someone work in progress. For the for people that don't understand, I think it can make the process look too easy. Like, oh, that was all it took? You just drew something on a napkin and you're going to charge me this much money? Oh, yeah. I mean, you got to... I mean, yeah. I mean, and that goes back to mm-hmm. if you know this person or not or what you're designing for them. So, I mean, you got to... I don't know. I mean, I, I find myself when I'm sketching something for somebody real quick to just to illustrate what I'm talking about. It usually looks pretty terrible, and they have to like, no, trust me, seriously, I know how to draw. Just, just wait. Let me, you know. Mm-hmm. It, so I just, just typically don't do that because I just, I know when yeah. I'm sketching something really quick. Yeah, that, that's a concern good. too, as I, I, mean, I don't <laughs> want people to think that this is the quality that you're gonna get. Yeah, say like, no, really, I can draw. Look, look at my website. I can actually. So yeah, I, I think, <laughs> I think it's something you have to strike the balance. It's like we talked about before. Uh, and we've talked about it in a previous episode, like the concept of failing quickly, fail fast. Like, so if this is a bad idea, whether I think so or not, my, my opinion doesn't matter as much. But if I can show you how bad your idea is quickly, then we can avoid going down that path. And I can just throw something together real quick. You can see it and go, yep, that's bad. Okay, let's go this way. So that's where that's how I like to approach it is like I'm rapidly prototyping stuff for you so you can see how bad it is or good it is and then you can pick up a direction to go. But I think that has to be balanced with making it look like it took a while. So like not like that, but you know, making it look like you put some effort into it and you yeah. just didn't throw something together. I think, I mean, if I'm still trying to figure out what they want, then, yeah, I'm more likely to, to sketch something. If I'm just trying to sketch out what they're telling me just to get an idea of someone on the right page, I may do that. If I immediately get an idea when they're talking, I'm not mm-hmm. going to sketch anything. Because, yeah, like you said, it makes it look too easy because you already got it. But, 
So typically, mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, well, all right, I'm gonna just hold that. Like, if, especially if it's yeah. good, because I'm like, okay, well, I may need to think on this or whatever. If it's just something me working through your idea that you had and just trying to help you think through it, then well, that's one of the things also that. where <laughs> I think it, it's help. It may be good to like charge a consulting fee for people because I've definitely sat down with people and talked them out of a logo design and into something else that they needed and in the end talked myself out of business but it, it was very good information I gave them in terms of what yeah. they needed to do and all that type of stuff but it didn't involve me yet like you know like if you're just starting a business and your stuff is just not together then you don't need a local yet. you need to. Yeah. there's a whole lot of other stuff you need to do to get ready so that because I was talking, talking to somebody else about this like there's a whole lot of other stuff you need to do to get ready so that when I do design your logo, it'll be effective and it'll work well for you. But if you don't have any of your other stuff in mind, mm-hmm. then I can design you a logo and I can charge you a lot of money and then you're going to be disappointed. Maybe you'll be disappointed in me, but technically it's your fault because you should. there's other stuff you should have done. And I probably, since I know I should have communicated that stuff to you. Well, I guess mm-hmm. it kind of depends on how badly you want money in the moment. You know, if you're busy, kind of busy, and you don't have time for this project anyway, then yeah, I definitely will talk you out of it. If I don't think it, this is actually a, you're not there yet anyway, then yeah, I'll try to talk you yeah, out of it. Yeah, don't come back. But yeah, I mean, but if I'm needing the money right then, then hey, <laughs> let's go. What's your bad idea? Let's do it. <laughs> so. I mean, I don't know. I mean, but usually, honestly, usually when it's a bad idea, it usually, you know, inspires bad ideas. So, I mean, if it's a bad idea, it's not going to yeah. inspire a good look. Yeah, so it's like, not so. helping. The only thing you're getting is a little bit of money. It's not helping you in general. Because I'd rather get good money, have a good logo yeah. for my portfolio, because that's worth more to me than just some money and more trash I can't put in my portfolio. Yeah. It's like, oh, what happened to that company? They uh, went out of business before they even... They were never really in business. Yeah. There was somebody I made a website for, and we did a bunch of work. Website, labels, all kinds of stuff, logo. And then, I don't know what happened to them. <laughs> they seem to be going on the right path. Well, so that's something... Disappeared. Maybe I have to invite this guy to be on the podcast one day. Anyway, a friend of mine... When he does work with customers, he want he he'll, he'll talk spend a good amount of time talking to the customer because his perspective is that he wants to embed himself in your business, and so it's one of those things like my success is your success is my success type of thing. So if you you know if you're not mm-hmm. going the right direction, he's going to try and step in and get you going the right direction, as well as you know put your website together and help build you an app and all the, you know all the, the te- technical stuff too. But he wants to make sure your business is, success, is a success because his that success means that you can come back to him and pay him more money for other services that may, he may be pro, able to provide. Because uh, a, a prime example is like we uh, I was working with him for a different client <clears throat> that wanted an application built, like a phone app, uh, like some sort of game. But uh, they didn't realize how much that costs to get done. One and then they. It wasn't a good idea for what they were hoping to gain from it. So they were hoping to have an app built, a, a game that people would download a lot and play, and then they would use that to collect donations and promote awareness about their organization. Uh, theory sounds good in practice and in reality. Once you factor in the costs and all the other things involved, it's not going to work. Um, so <clears throat> we talked to them about it, and we basically kind of talk them out of doing the app and instead encourage them to do some other things so that they could be position themselves to be more successful financially so that when it is time to do the app or the game or whatever it is they can actually afford it so that's the type of mentality I think that's an important type of mentality to take as you approach working with people because if you think of them as instead of thinking of them as Here's this set, you know, this five hundred dollars I can get off of this project from them. Instead, if you think about it as here's the potential for 
thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars I can get off of them if they're successful, then it positions you in a way where you say, okay, I need to make sure they're successful, period, because this is insuring me money down the line, you know? Yeah, yeah, it does not sound good. Doesn't. I can say um, high insurance. It doesn't no, work, no, no, I've no, definitely no. done tried to do my best to push people in the right direction. And then if you're just terrible and you're not knowing how to do business, then it's not going to help you. And you can have the best design stuff, but it doesn't matter. Yeah, because there's a lot of factors that go into that. Because it's like you know, I can't ensure your success because I mean, I also got to get paid if I'm putting all this work in. And if your business isn't doing very well, how are you going well, to pay me? I guess that's. I don't know. There's a lot of factors in there because that really, if you're taking that perspective, then you don't take every client that comes to you. You say, "No, you're not right for me. Can't help you." Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, you have to be really discerning with that. So I mean, I mean, and you know that mm-hmm. that can be a thing. You know, I mean, where you, yeah, I mean, but that's like a tailored service. Yeah, comes yeah, yeah. At a certain price point. So, I mean, I mean, because yeah, I mean, it would. Lo- I would I mean, I, I, I mean, I would love to, you know, be able to look around and see. Like, I made that logo. I made that, you know, designed that for this company. You know, I would love to be able to say that, but you know, it's. <laughs> I can't do that for everybody because you give away too much of yourself, and like, I don't know. Or, yeah, I'm not. I don't. I don't. I don't think at the, this point I have the time to dedicate to doing mm-hmm. anything like that for somebody. This is somebody I know. Even if I know you, that, but, my dedication is goes just about as far as your dedication. <laughs> well, yeah, you're not serious, yeah, exactly. I'm not as serious either. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and you know, certain friends and stuff like that, I'll do more. But you know. Yeah. All right. Well, that's been another episode of the IC Pixels podcast. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, yep. Any closing words? Um, we should probably record earlier because I am tired. I'm tired too. <laughs> I don't have to work all day tomorrow. So, uh, yeah. Uh, well, well, remember to uh, check out our Instagram. Our Instagram is at Alien Muffin. Uh, Alien. We're going to post some work on there. Anthony's going to post some work on there so you can see some of the stuff we're working on. So we've been working on some projects out here, doing things, designing stuff, sketching, working, uh, mm-hmm. connecting, linking, Tarkin. building. Uh, yeah, <laughs> check out that. Check out our shop, uh, alienmuffin.com slash shop, I think, or Threadless. Uh, alienmuffin.threadless.com what is it yeah that there's yeah, a link in our bio on definitely. Instagram or go to our Facebook and check it out there's a shop we have a shop we've got some t-shirts and things on there on the CL. definitely check them out cop something for the spring uh yeah uh like and subscribe and comment and all that stuff up to the podcast and enjoy your week and your weekend because it's Thursday right now I don't know when we're going to publish this Let's <laughs> go.